Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm JB, this is my allotment that you see behind me, and every week I upload a new kind of vlog episode really, it's an allotment diary. But today I've got something slightly different from what I normally do. I've got three major pests at the moment, aphids, cabbage whitefly, and flea beetle, and they're attacking everything. And I've got a new product called neem oil, which I'm gonna be trying out, and hopefully along the way I can show you everything you need to know about neem oil. If you've got any specific questions, feel free to ask me in the comments, or in the description below there are timestamps so you can jump to the specific parts of the video that might answer your question. I really hope you enjoy the video and you find it useful. Okay, so what is neem oil? It's become really popular the last few years, you've probably heard of it, and it's used in gardens as an organic pesticide. The oil comes from the nut of the neem tree, or the nim tree, and it's a slightly strange bottle, and that's because it has multiple uses. It might look a little bit different when you buy it, uh, but this one that I've got looks a bit more like a beauty product than something you might use in the garden. So today is going to be the first time I try out neem oil in the garden. It's meant to have a really wide range of benefits. The first being that it affects a huge number of pests. I've got loads of pests on my crops at the moment. One of them, aphids. I've got flea beetles eating my cabbage and my kohlrabi, and I've got cabbage whitefly all over them as well. And all three of those species should be hit by neem oil. There's a huge range of other species as well, like certain moths, scale, spider mites, that kind of thing. There's a massive range, massive list of commoner garden species that will be put off by neem oil. Another great thing is that it acts as a foliar fertilizer. So as you spray it on the leaves, it's taken in by the plant and it can actually improve the health of the leaves and the plant. Another great thing about neem oil is that it shouldn't impact those beneficial insects in the garden. Things like ladybird, which are gonna be eating your pests and you really don't wanna be killing off. They really help to keep things in balance and keep those numbers down. And the reason it doesn't impact those beneficial species, I'll talk about in detail a little bit later, but the main reason is if they don't eat the leaves, they should be okay. That said, ladybirds can be impacted if you spray it directly on them. So whenever you're spraying, be really careful what you're hitting. Make sure you try and avoid pollinators such as bees or butterflies, that kind of thing. Another great point that unlike the chemical sprays, neem oil won't do you any harm if you do accidentally consume some at the concentrations that you're going to be applying it. It can also help to prevent diseases such as soot or powdery mildew that might form on the leaves as well. So that's all the good things about neem oil. Are there some bad? Nothing's perfect and there are some potential drawbacks of using neem oil. One thing that you do want to be really careful of is make sure your plants aren't drought stressed. Um, make sure that you've given them a really good water because if they haven't been watered then you can do some damage to the leaves. One plant that it might not work so well on, we'll find out today, is waxy leaved plants. So these brassicas, they have really waxy leaves. They're kind of naturally hydrophobic. Water runs off them. So the neem oil might not be absorbed as well as it might be with other plants. Now I said it was safe to eat at the concentrations you're gonna be applying it, but you might not want to. It can make leaves taste very bitter. So when you're putting them on anything that you're gonna actually eat, you wanna leave it a couple of days or make sure you give it a really good rinse. And the other thing is that out of the bottle it is toxic. Now that's no different to anything that you might buy at the supermarket, but it's especially toxic to children. It can be really damaging to kids, so if you do have little ones running around the garden or the allotment, make sure they don't get their hands on it. So one slight drawback of using neem oil is that you can't apply the product by itself. You have to make a mixture, and that mixture only lasts about eight hours. So once you've made it, you've got to throw it away, and then every time you want to reapply it afterwards, you're going to have to make up that mixture again. So how does this stuff actually work? How does it stop things from eating your plants? Well, I think it's quite interesting, actually. The first thing it does is it stops things from ever landing on your plants in the first place. It's a really good insect repellent. So it's a great preventative measure to take before pests actually land on your plot in the first place. Secondly, and I think this is where it gets interesting, I mentioned earlier that the neem oil is absorbed by the plant through its leaves and it acts as a foliant fertilizer. Well, the neem oil stays in the plant system for a few days and any insects that land on your plants or are there already 
and eat the leaves, or burrow in and take the nutrients from the plant like aphids do. Well, they also consume the neem oil, and they're affected by the active ingredient in neem oil, which is called azadirectin. Now this is a metabolite, and what it does is fantastic. It completely disrupts their growth, their mating, it stops them from being able to eat properly, it, it completely throws them haywire. And because the whole plant absorbs it, it's really effective at getting rid of pests from your plants. So let's get it mixed up and get it onto the plants. I do just want to say beforehand that it's quite important, or you can have much better results if you make sure you get 100% neem oil, like this one. Not sponsored, by the way, obviously. Um, there's a lot of different products on the market. You can get um, neem extract, which you can buy. And that stuff tends to be about 40-30% neem oil and lots of other stuff. Um, it's not necessarily bad, but with this stuff you know exactly what you're doing, and it does tend to be that these have a higher level of the active ingredient as a directin. So if you can, look for 100% neem oil that's been cold pressed. So, for your mix, you're going to need three things. Firstly, your neem oil, obviously. Secondly, a dish soap or something like that, and this is going to act as an emulsifier. Uh, if you can find something natural, like Dr. Bronner's, a Castile soap, it's a little bit nicer for your plants than something like this, but it's all I've got. And then the third thing that you're going to need is a mixer like this. I've got a one gallon one, but if you've got a smaller kind of hand one, that's fine too. So the mixture is fairly simple. We've got five gallons of water in here. We're going to be using two tablespoons of neem oil. That's about 35, 40 milliliters. And then we're going to be using one teaspoon to maybe half a teaspoon of dish soap. So the, the order that you add this in is really important. It's kind of like making a salad dressing. Because we're mixing oil and water, it doesn't want to mix naturally, which is why we use the soap. This is our emulsifier. So you want to put the soap into the water, get it nice and mixed up. You want to have your water nice and room temperature as well. Leave it in the greenhouse if you can, it really helps. And then you want to slowly add your neem oil, just like a good salad dressing, and mix it, mix it, mix it as you go. Washing up liquid in, give it a really good shake. So now we've got the soap in there, we can very slowly start to add the neem oil, making sure to keep this agitated the whole time. Really, really good shake. Have a little look, make sure it's not all sat on top. And if it's nice and mixed in, which it is, you then want to top up with the rest of the water. Once again, making sure to use nice and warm water that's been in the greenhouse a little while. And it's ready to go on your plants. Now I do have a few tips for you while you're spraying. Uh, if you can use a wand like this, it's great because it means you can get under the leaves. Making sure that you get the under leaves is great because it just means that there's that extra coverage and it's more likely that the neem oil will be taken up by the plant. Another thing, be really careful, look out for flying insects like hoverflies, ladybirds, butterflies, that kind of thing as you go, bees as well, just in case, because you don't want to get them. Now you don't really want to soak the leaves, you just want to get them with one nice coat, really. Oh, another thing that you might want to do is just give the soil around the plant a little spray. And that way anything that falls off, or any eggs that have been laid in the soil, they'll get got as well. There we go, that's everything treated with neem oil. Um, seemed to be pretty easy, quite happy with it. I'll be back in five, six, seven days, something like that, and we'll look at how the neem oil has performed with the aphids, the flea beetle, and the cabbage whitefly. So we're back, it's been about a week since I sprayed the plants with neem oil, 
and the weather has been awful. Pretty apocalyptic this week. I sprayed them on Monday, today is Saturday, so the weather might have impacted it slightly, but I'm gonna get my macro lens on the camera and we'll have a proper close-up look at the insects, see whether or not they've been impacted. So interesting, after the first coat there's sort of mixed results. In some places the aphids had definitely been hit and their numbers had been reduced. You could see where the dead ones were. But in other places they still look pretty healthy. Relatively quite a lot of movement for the weather. So we're going to give it another coat today and report back in another few days and see how they're looking. Right, we're back. Today is Friday, so it's been about a week since we put that second coat of neem oil on the plants. Uh, I'm going to get the macro lens on. I'm going to wait till it stops raining, that's why I've retreated into the greenhouse, but yeah. Macro lens on, and we'll go and have a look at the cabbages, the brassicas, see what the cabbage whitefly are doing. So I think we've had really good early successful results with the cabbages. There are still cabbage whitefly on there, but they're definitely reduced in numbers. You can see areas where they're dying off. And I can't see that they've spread to any new parts of the plants. All the new growth on there looks really healthy. It looks lush. It isn't being deformed by the aphid attacks or anything like that. So macro lens back on. We'll go and have a look at the aphids and the salad leaves, see how they're getting on. So the results with the salad leaves aren't quite as dramatic as with the cabbage whitefly. The cabbage whitefly you can see there's massive areas where they've been hit really hard. On here they're holding up a little bit stronger. As you look at the plants you can still see there are quite a few aphids throughout. But the most important thing is that they're not spreading to new leaves. And the new growth that is coming through looks pretty healthy. It isn't getting that kind of deformation that's characteristic of aphid attack. So it's really encouraging. But it's very different from the effect that you get from a chemical spray, where you can come along, spray your plants one day, a few days later they look good as new, like the pests were never there. You don't really get that with neem oil, it's a much slower acting agent. It does take a lot longer, but I think it's fair to say that these aphids are a lot more under control than they were. So yeah, the initial signs are pretty encouraging for the neem oil, I think. I'm going to get back in the greenhouse before it starts raining again, and give you some early conclusions. So the good points. I think one of the most fantastic things about neem oil is because it's absorbed into your plant leaves, you don't need to be super careful about making sure every square inch of your plant is covered and checking right in the crevices for every little aphid because if you miss just one or two, they will come back and the population will explode. With neem oil, you can apply generally across the leaves. It's absorbed into every part of the plant and every insect that feeds on that plant will be affected. Secondly, I've seen evidence that it doesn't impact beneficial insects. There are still loads of ladybirds and their larvae, uh, hoverfly larvae as well, eating our pests. And that's because azadirectin isn't biomagnified up the food chain. And another good thing about it is that you can apply it consistently every week if you want to, because it's got all those other benefits. It kind of fertilizes your plants and it will prevent other leaf problems, all that kind of thing. So there's a lot of positives to using neem oil, but there are a few drawbacks, and I think the first is probably cost. The initial outlay for using neem oil can be quite expensive. For a liter of neem oil, you're looking at a cost of about 10 to 15 pounds, and you might also need to buy a sprayer, which could be anywhere from five to 20 pounds, depending on the kind that you get. So that initial outlay could be up to 30 pounds, and realistically, you could go into a shop, pick something up off the shelf that's gonna work, and that will cost you a tenth of the price. But if you look at this as an investment, I mean, the neem oil that I've got is gonna last me absolutely years. The sprayer you can use for other things. So although there's an initial outlay, which is quite high, the economy over time, I think it works out pretty well. So something else to consider, 
every time you want to use neem oil, you're going to have to make up that mixture. You're going to have to go through the procedure that I showed you earlier. And if you're doing that once a week, it's going to get old quickly. And the other thing is that you're going to need that soap to emulsify it every time. And I used dish soap first time round, and uh, that wasn't a good idea. Some of the plants reacted really badly to it. The tomatoes and the chilies in particular showed some real negative effects, as you can see here. And friend of the channel, Eli from Eli and Kate's Kitchen Garden, link up here. Uh, she's just put out an amazing video discussing all the different kinds of information that's out there about insecticidal soaps. Uh, loads of really good advice in there. If you're thinking about putting anything on your plants, I recommend you do go and watch it. Really, really useful video. I wish I'd seen it before I put the first coat of neem oil on my plants. Now the final and probably most important thing to talk about is how neem oil works with really bad infestations. Now, in my experience, it's not done too well on the salad leaves. I have only given it two weeks, but with two applications, you might expect to see slightly better results. And compared to what you can buy off the shelf, you would definitely see better results with a bug spray. So that's something to really bear in mind. If you've got a crop that you're really precious about, maybe you love growing your tomatoes or your chilies like me, uh, and you see that infestation too late, maybe you go away and you come back and there are aphids everywhere, maybe neem oil isn't the best thing for you to use. Maybe if you're not super fussed about organic growing, then you'll opt for a bug spray instead and it will have quick acting results and then maybe you could switch to neem oil for a longer term approach. The best thing to do, I think, is get ahead of the pests. Get spraying your neem oil early, March, April, that kind of time, before the pests really arrive and take hold. That's what I did in the greenhouse, and neem oil has absolutely nipped that in the bud. They are nowhere to be seen now, uh, which is fantastic. That's really the result I was hoping for. And every maybe three weeks, I'm just going to give them another coat of neem oil, keep on top of it. And like I said earlier, loads of benefits to using it. So, so long as you don't overdo it with the soap or the wrong kind of soap, then it should be pretty effective. So that covers everything that I wanted to talk about today. I hope you found it really useful. I wanted it to be a window into my personal experience using neem oil and what I thought. Hopefully it's everything you need to know. If it isn't, if there's anything I've missed or there are any questions, like I say, please do ask me in the comments below. Would I recommend neem oil? Absolutely, 100%. It's a fantastic pesticide with a wide range of other benefits for your plants and it's not going to impact the ecosystem in the same way that a chemical spray might do. If you learned something new today or if you found the video useful, please do drop me a like. Consider subscribing as well and hitting the bell if you want notifications. Full disclosure, this is not my usual kind of content. Normally it's about this allotment behind me and trying to whip it into shape. Um, but yeah, hopefully you'll consider staying around. So with that said, thank you ever so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next time.